It's time to talk about Justin Trudeau. Sorry, sorry, hang on. Gotta not be so sarcastic. <clears throat> Let me try that again. It's time to talk about Justin Trudeau. They see me rolling, they hate Now, I'm not in the habit of doing that because, uh, to be honest, I sort of feel like it's punching down. I mean, it's hard to explain, but perhaps the best summary of the man is that if global politics were a horror movie, he'd be the first to die. Do you know what I mean? But he is the teenager that goes for a dip at the beginning of Jaws. He is Drew Barrymore's boyfriend strapped to the garden chair. I mean, that is very much the vibe. But it turns out that behind this drippy, baked, boring uh, facade, he's as corrupt as a motherfucker. How Justin Trudeau's latest ethics scandal could spell the end of his career. And there'll be Canadians listening to this like, uh, yeah dude, we know. But you have to understand, any knowledge I have of your PM is channeled exclusively through the prism of international politics and the culture war. I have no idea where he stands on domestic issues. I don't know what his tax policy is. Uh, to me, he is the people kind guy, right? He's the feminist weasel who shows up at the UN to support Emma Watson and Copper Feel. And he's the chap who, in the articulate department, makes George W. Bush sound like Marcus Cicero. And what do you and your family do to cut back on plastics? Uh, we uh, uh, we have uh, recently switched to drinking uh, water bottles out of uh, water out of uh, when we have water bottles uh, out of a uh, plastic uh, sorry away from plastic towards uh, paper um, like drink box water bottles sort of things. There's there's a number of choices we can make as consumers. The camera men are laughing. Little did I know, therefore, that he is also the first prime minister in Canadian history to have broken federal law. Not once, not twice, but now possibly three times. Don't try and deny it. You're one of them, dude. And by my accounts, that's strike three. What's strike three? You're a ginger, a Jew, and from Jersey. Three strikes, Cal. You're out. First, there was the secretive trip to the Bahamas in 2016, when Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his family rode in a helicopter owned by the Aga Khan, the billionaire and Ismaili Muslim spiritual leader whose organisation has received hundreds of millions of dollars in Canadian federal grants to advance its work overseas. <laughs> Trudeau apparently broke four separate uh, sections of Canada's conflict of interest law in this case, including visiting the Khan's private island and then failing to recuse himself from two meetings that could have furthered the businessman's private interest. The Commissioner's report this morning makes it very clear that I should have taken precautions and cleared my family vacation and dealings with the Aga Khan in advance. I'm sorry I didn't. And in the future, I will be clearing all my family vacations with the Commissioner's office. Uh, yeah, good idea. After all, accepting gifts from tycoons currently lobbying your government, uh, not a great look. I mean, at best, you're a tit. And at worst, it's a bribe. Now, do I believe that? Uh, look, I'm inclined to give people the benefit of the doubt. I, I don't know, maybe it's my cross to bear as an Englishman. So let's chalk that one up to you being about as cognizant as a lobotomized earthworm. But we're just getting warmed up. Strike? Yeah! 
Then, some three years later, the Trudeau government was found to have pressured then Attorney General Jody Wilson Raybould to spare SNC Lavalin, one of Canada's largest engineering companies, from prosecution for bribing Libyan officials in return for lucrative government contracts between 2001 and 11. For a period of approximately four months between September and December of 2018, I experienced a consistent and sustained effort by many people within the government to seek to politically interfere in the exercise of prosecutorial discretion in my role as the Attorney General of Canada in an inappropriate effort to secure a deferred prosecution agreement with SNC-Lavalin. Welcome to the Banana Republic of Canada, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, this is an entirely different uh, kettle of poisson, right? I mean, we are in the realms now of flat-out criminality. Every person who intentionally attempts in any manner to obstruct, pervert, or defeat the course of justice is guilty of an indictable offence and liable to imprisonment for a term of not more than 10 years or an offence punishable on summary conviction. How does that not apply in this case? He knew that if SNC-Lavalin were prosecuted, they would be barred from accepting government contracts, right? So he told his attorney general to settle out of court, which he's not allowed to do, and when she refused, had her demoted after the Canadian Ethics Commissioner said Trudeau had violated federal conflict of interest rules, he said, I assume responsibility for everything that happened in my office. He added, we recognise the way this happened shouldn't have happened. But said, <laughs> but said, look, buts are for ashtrays. But! Oh, but! Uh. Did you say but? But said his government was acting in the interest of the national economy. So, just a classic sorry not sorry. I mean, this guy is one slippery customer. So listen, if I could just ask you one question about the SNC-Lavalin scandal? Ultimately, Trudeau lost two star female cabinet ministers. They resigned including the first indigenous woman to become... Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> and the scandal almost cost his Liberal Party's hold on power. Now, many people have pointed out the similarities between what Trudeau was found guilty of here and the accusations made against Donald Trump with regards to Ukraine, and that's pretty fair. A difference to keep in mind, though, is... At least nobody in Trump's own cabinet testified against him under oath. <laughs> that is pretty damning. Now the charismatic G7 leader has a different problem on his hands. It not only threatens to deal a fatal blow to the once impenetrable Trudeau brand, what, his impenetrable brand as a dog rapist, it also casts unwelcome scrutiny on his immediate family and on an international charity juggernaut with links to Bill Clinton, Oprah Winfrey and several other well-known celebrities and leaders. The latest imbroglio is related to the government contract handed to the WE charity to run a $660 million programme for students unable to find summer work due to COVID-19. Well, uh, due to the government response due to COVID-19, but that's another video. Despite the fact that the charity paid Trudeau's family members for speaking engagements, Trudeau never thought to recuse himself from the cabinet decision on the contract. Where have we seen that before? The Federal Ethics Commissioner will also investigate Finance Minister Bill Morneau's involvement in the decision, since his daughter currently works for the charity. 
<laughs> this is like something out of The Sopranos. Since the revelations, Trudeau and his finance minister have both publicly apologised for not removing themselves from cabinet conversations regarding we. On Thursday, Bardish Chaga, the Minister of Diversity and Inclusion and Youth and Shit, again, another video, revealed that we could have received a maximum of $32 million for its role in administering the program. Now, I might be being a bit presumptuous here, as the case is technically ongoing, but he's more or less confessed by apologising, and just last week testified before the Canadian Finance Committee in a manner that, shall we say, was hardly exculpatory. I mean, you should listen to the full 90 minutes, as it makes for pretty good theatre. But here's an extract, and you tell me, is this a man playing with a straight deck, or does he perhaps have something to hide? I'm going to ask you again, Thank because you no, no, nobody, you. nobody believes you when you say you don't know how much money your family has got from the WE Group. So you've had a month to look into that. You knew you were going to testify here. Again, how much money total have your brother, mother, and spouse received from this organization? How much? That information has been publicly shared, but I will highlight. Well, then tell me what mother, it is. Uh, my mother. How much has, uh, has just the dollar through, figure uh, throughout her life? The dollar uh, in figure, Prime Minister. Various ways and is uh, proud how much? of the work that she's done, and I'm proud of her. How much? Uh, I'm looking for can, a dollar figure. We can, we can get that number for you if you like. It's been in, out in the media. It's been in the media, in but you don't know it. I don't have it in front of me. And quite you don't frankly, know how much your family has received from this organization, which you tried to give a half billion dollars. Really? Can I answer, Mr. Polyev? I'm waiting. You haven't done an answer so far. Let's make this the no. first one. No. Oh, snap! My mother uh, has worked as an advocate. The dollar figure, Prime Minister. Uh, speaker uh, for how much? many good organizations across the country. Mr. Many, Prime Minister, you are, in, you, uh, you are you are being asked a direct a question at a parliamentary a committee. To support her because she does her own work and I'm proud point of, of order? the work point that of, she point does. Of order? I uh, do not uh, feel that a it is my the responsibility question. to peer into uh, the work my mother is doing because I have confidence point of order to suspend the work that she's doing. Um, yeah, point of order. Uh, Point of order I, to suspend. I've come please? to learn that the, uh, the the chairperson's power has gone out and is no longer part of this meeting. Um, uh, may I propose that we it's okay? We can uh, we can keep for, uh, Prime Minister and I can uh, continue talking. No, no. I suspected that might be a problem. It's very convenient timing for the lights to go out. <laughs> Look, I got a message to the effect that his power has gone out. I have no reason to to distrust him. I hope uh, you don't but, pull the uh, fire alarm now. Yeah, well, look, that, there's no intent in my own private home here in the middle of a pandemic. I don't have a fire alarm. Um, Mr. I, Fraser, I propose the, 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 general, the general process is that the vice chair assumes, uh, assumes the chairing of the meeting. So we'll continue. And that would, that would, be, that would be me. <laughs> of course it is. What I wouldn't give for a cut to Trudeau's face in that moment. That is absolutely fantastic. The Royal Vizier. <laughs> That would be me. The general process is that the vice chair assumes uh, assumes the chairing of the meeting. So we'll continue. And that would that would be that would be me. Oh, he is so <laughs> And it just goes on like that. Trudeau refusing to answer questions and getting thoroughly rogered. At one point, he tries to justify signing off on We as they were the only company in Canada with the ability to support the government in this jobs program, right? At which point, somebody says... Uh, you are aware that the WE charity has no assets, is in violation of its bank covenant, and can't keep managerial staff for toffee? And he was like, uh, 
no. <laughs> this is precisely the behaviour you'd expect from an idiot with a profound sense of entitlement. We all make mistakes, but with this third violation now, it's clear that Justin Trudeau doesn't believe the law applies to him. And when you combine that with the reality of his primary project, which appears to be turning Canada into woke Mecca, I've got to ask the Canadians in the crowd, what are you doing? <laughs> Have you been pouring brandy on your pancakes in lieu of maple syrup as of late? <laughs> the guy is a fucking omni-shambles. Which makes me wonder, how bad is the opposition? I mean, this must be a man who just turns up to Parliament covered in children's blood every morning. And being British, I feel sort of partly responsible. But what can I do, is my question. Shall I write the Queen and ask her to fly over there and appy slap him or something? Because this is beyond a joke now. Uh, Justin, what do you have to say for yourself? I'm giving you a chance now. The video's over, right? You get the last word, yeah? Speak to your voters and tell them why I don't know what I'm talking about and you remain the right man for the job. Go. Poverty is sexist. <laughs>